Hey guys, Ezzy here bringing you an extra video of the day and some people are like, hey, an extra video? Uh, yeah, I'm going to start uploading two videos a day as much as I can again. Probably going to be starting out with, I don't know, four or five days a week that we do two videos a day. Today's going to be a league discussion, but it will be gameplay eventually. Obviously doing gameplay requires me getting ahead in recording of gameplay and I'm going to try and record a bit today and tomorrow. So maybe today and tomorrow won't be gameplay, but then starting... Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, that's when gameplay will come. Uh, so Climb to Master, the replay series, A to Z. Th those are the series that I'm going to be doing as my extra uh, video. Uh, so there's plenty to do. So that's kind of cool. So uh, expect that soon. Uh, and then the second thing today is going to be, uh, we're going to be doing a lead discussion on gaming events. So what can you expect to happen in them and stuff like that? Because uh, I just returned from one. And unfortunately, I will say, I, you know, last time I went to Y58, I did a bit of a vlog that I recorded uh, footage and just spoke over it. Unfortunately, I didn't record any footage. Uh, the last event I went to, I wasn't there very long. And in that time, I was just too busy. Uh, you know, just socializing, talking to people, and then eventually doing stage work and stuff, which I'll talk about later. So yeah, I just didn't have any time to record. Uh, I literally finished my stage work, and then half an hour later, I went home. So yeah, I didn't have any time. Um, but we're going to be talking about events today, so what can you expect from them? And the first half will kind of be what just generally happens there. So just you walk in, what's there? And then the second half, I'm going to be just talking about some more stuff about the events that I've been to from my own perspective. So little stories... Um, talking about the stage work I just did and stuff like that. So it's going to be a split video. The first half is going to be more on topic of what you should expect and that type of thing. And the second half is just going to be me talking about my, my own experience about going to gaming events. So the first thing to say is we're going to be linking this to a brand new QT. Um, so if you guys want to get involved, it'll be a link in the description. Um, and basically, I just want people to give their own feedback on gaming events or ask questions about gaming events. Um, you know, what can you expect if you're a bit nervous? Just just ask questions or answer them or just give your entire feedback. That would be amazing. Uh, I do want people to get used to QT a bit more. I'm going to be working with them in a little bit more of a professional manner uh, moving forward. Um, it took a while for me to kind of go, do I want to work? And I was like, no, this is actually a very good website and I do want my audience to get used to it because it's just way better than the comment section on YouTube. It's like automatically done and it, I don't want to get into it like crazy. You guys will know. Um, and I would just say as a bit of an incentive, then there's not always going to be an incentive to join in the QTs uh, other than making me happy. Um, but as an incentive for this maybe next week or so. Um, so if I see good feedback on the QTs that I'm kind of managing at the moment, I'm going to invite that person to join the replay series. So people have been asking for the replay series. I've got one replay to do and record. I'll probably do that later today. But I need more people. Because even though I have, I think, four people signed up on the Patreon, I could technically open it up to more people because, you know, I, I technically people have asked. But I'd rather, you know, use the QT to kind of encourage people to, to join the QT and open up a slot that way. Um, so, yeah, if you give good feedback, you reply to people, you know, that type of thing, you just are generally helpful. I potentially will send you a message and go, hey, what's your information? Send me a replay file and then I'll do a replay uh, analysis episode for you. Um, so that's your incentive to get involved today. So gaming events. So the, the two that I'm going to be mainly talking about today is going to be uh, MCM Comic Con and uh, Insomnia. So arguably these two are the biggest in the UK. You could throw in EGX, I guess, here, but I, I, I'm not sure how big EGX is comparing. Maybe EGX is a bit bigger than Insomnia. But anyway, still, we're, we're still talking about decent gaming events that on, uh, well, for example, the last um, gaming event literally was this last weekend on the Saturday I went, which is always the busiest day. And I found out there was 10,000 people on the, there that, that day. So there's a lot of people in, it's a pretty big area, but it's still packed. Um, so that's just the first thing to say, is if you're not very good with crowded spaces, with walking literally in like a conga line, just trying to get somewhere, these events probably are not for you. There's a lot of that, you know, it, these events are packed. And even though the corridors are 10 foot wide, that, that there's still 10 foot packed of people. Like the whole width of an aisle is just taken. You can, you know, make your way through like Star Wars, I guess. Uh, and I was just say Fi is very good at doing that because he's so tall. Um, but yeah, it's, it's packed. So if you're not very good with a lot of people in, it's a big area, but just a lot of people, these events you might want to miss. 
Um, <clears throat> but what can you generally expect there? So why do you go to these gaming events? I think a lot of people want to know. So the first thing <clears throat> is to game. So you can game at these events. There are uh, places. Uh, so there are two different types of tickets you can get. There is a LAN ticket that you can bring your own computer, your own uh, keyboard, your own chair if you really want to. And you can have your own setup in a certain hall. And you can just game away for the whole weekend if you wanted to. You, do, you didn't even need to go into the gaming hall, uh, the, the actual event. You could just stay in the actual computer hall, your own playing computer. And people do that. They just kind of go to uh, their internet friends. Like, for example, my main friend group, we've got two people from Sweden. We've got one guy on the, the south coast of England. We've got one guy near Liverpool. We've got one guy in Scotland, one guy technically in Ireland. And then me and like the, you know, the south, nearer London than anyone else. So we've got a lot of range of people. And these gaming events, a lot of people use them to kind of come together in one place and just game with each other the whole weekend. So that is one big thing that people do with them. I personally don't use them for that. And maybe I will one day. Um, but, you know, I don't even go into those halls because I think you need a specific ticket to get into those halls. I probably could with the, the passes that I get, but I personally don't go into them. And I'll just say safety and security wise... Generally, I think there's all those locking cables and locking nuts, but you might want to invest in your own little security system as well, because, you know, if you're bringing an expensive computer and stuff, then, yeah, you don't really want to get it stolen. But I'd recommend if you are very serious about these, these gaming events, personally, I, if I ever did it, I wouldn't bring my computer and monitors, you know, I'd bring my MSI laptop. That would be enough for the weekend. Um, and that's why gaming laptops can be useful to some people if they do go do do the, uh, to these conventions so that's one big thing that people go to them for uh, but then the other thing that people go to these events for is the exhibits so you walk into the main event hall and there's just you know everything is just in front of you so you can vaguely see different stands in front of you it's like oh there's game you know the the store minecraft xbox nintendo playstation so you have all the the basics and all these general areas will have play areas so on example xbox will have all xboxes set up that you might have to queue for, obviously, but they'll they'll have games set up that may not have come out yet or have just come out and you get to play them for, I think, you know, 20 minutes, roughly 15, 20 minutes. And then obviously your turn will be done. Um, but they, yeah, a lot of demos, a lot of pre-releases go, go to these events and they want to collect feedback. So expect when you play these games, expect an employee of Nintendo or PlayStation to actually talk to you and go, what do you think? Or if ever you are playing one of these games and you think they're helping you a little bit too much, it's because they want to show you a certain way to play the game and see what you do. See if it's comfortable. See if you will actually adjust yourself. They basically go They go to these events to collect feedback. Like that, That's pretty much it. Um, you know, their Xbox, PlayStation, they're not really here to sell stuff. Uh, they're there to let people experience what they do. Uh, the, another big thing that's recently come in the, in the past few years is VR stations. Um, so Oculus, uh, Oculus Rift and that type of thing, they're always in these events. And the, again, what the biggest reason is to let people experience VR because most people haven't. Uh, most people have heard of uh, virtual reality, but have never put a headset on themselves. So there's a lot of these stations as well that you can go try them out. And they range from just the headset to the whole full chair locked in and you're on a roller coaster. Experience them. You know, again, I don't a lot of the time have time for them myself because I go to these events as a guest. So I'm doing other stuff. But I see and when I'm walking past, I see people doing it. Um, so I'd, I'd recommend doing that if you've never used VR. Personally, I have quite a bit. Um, I was actually invited into the Sony office maybe a year ago and uh, did some stuff with them. So VR is really good. So I would definitely take that advantage and go to these events to try those out. And then finally, really, the, the final type of booth that you'll have is the actual stores. So people are here also to sell stuff and that can range from uh, apparel. So T-shirts, hats, gaming stuff. Uh, that, that There's a lot of those to accessories so fake swords shields guns uh, from gaming characters like you can get a thor's mjolnir and stuff uh then artwork and this artwork will range from people just selling random prints to the artist herself or himself selling their own things which is also really cool um so that that's pretty much the type of uh, stalls that you'll have so you've got the play areas you've got the um the virtual reality areas as well you've got the stores and then finally i guess the the final type of booth is the content creators so even within the event hall specific content creators 
or content create families have their own booths so the, the the biggest two really to name is syndicate so he always goes to insomnia and again you should expect a similar thing at, at a comic-con really uh for certain creators but people go to these events literally just to meet syndicate get a t-shirt or something get a photo with him and what i'll say is these queues can be ridiculous they can be from an hour to four hours long like they are dumb but when you go to these events specifically to meet that person people do wait for four hours and then the other group of people uh, obviously i'm sure most of you heard of them uh, the yogs cast they also have their own booth and you get to meet specific members so they'll always announce who's going but generally the the, the likely people are hat films lewis duncan uh, shin terps hannah um calf is becoming a bigger one that's going to events so th there's a, always a big range of people that go and uh, again same story with the queues that they could range from an hour to four hours um personally i don't really do the queuing thing again i go to these events for a slightly different reason but like i mentioned this video is just trying to get me or trying to get you guys prepared if you've never been so if you do want to meet someone specific that has their own booth prepare to wait four hours now you may also ask okay what about content creators like me or smaller people that don't have specific booths or stuff like that well there's there's two things really there is a, a specific booth which is called the meet and greet um so if you're a special guest at these events and they they think you're big enough they will give you a designated slot and time to actually take over that booth um, or at least a part of it so if you know uh, for example I, I i've heard of them but i've never watched them but the creatures i think they're called they didn't have their own booth but they were just set up in the meet and greet booth a couple times throughout the week or weekend um so you can go there and then you exactly know where they are but then other people like me you either we like we either have to create our own meeting point which you could easily do you know twitter facebook is always a good way for that or if they're doing stage work or anything like that that's what i did i just said if you want to meet me i'll be on stage at this time i'll i'll, I'll be you know come then and that's what people did a lot of the time um but yeah it's just a lot about you know walking around meeting people uh, experiencing it which is pretty cool so that that's pretty much what you can expect or also just to kind of say food and drink there's food trucks like you know the food taco van type styles they're, they're they're all over the place in specific halls and they range from burgers hot dogs fries ice cream pretty much you name it they probably have it and there's 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 adequate seating but a lot of the time if uh, well i see people eating outside you know when i left insomnia um and i left you know relatively early i walked outside and there were just people eating all over the on the grass outside i was like mm, that's probably a good idea um so that's pretty much it that's that's kind of what i want to give and then comic-con what's different with comic-con to insomnia is obviously comic-con is less focused of just about gaming insomnia is very much a gaming event and insomnia is like everything uh, comic-con sorry is everything um so there's comic book stuff there's celebrities that go there um you know obviously you guys probably have seen some of the panels um there's more stalls selling stuff rather than the the gaming experiences but it, it could be that the, the hall is just bigger so they can fit more in um but yeah comic Con's is more of a, a general geeking geek and gamer uh, geek nerd gamer whole experience than insomnia is insomnia is very much just a gaming event where comic con is like the whole thing which does include gaming obviously um but as somebody that would be like okay what one should you go to first so if you're sitting there going yeah that that kind of sounds like fun maybe i'll go to one of them in the upcoming which one should i go to comic con or insomnia so like i mentioned if you're only really focused on gaming stuff insomnia is for you if you want to kind of have comic books and all that stuff thrown in the mix then yeah comic con is probably for you but if you're interested in both i'd probably advise insomnia first because it's smaller so get yourself used to it a little bit because it's still manic it's still crazy busy but comic-con is on another level i think from memory and this could be wrong i think comic-con has thirty thousand people on the saturday and insomnia has ten thousand, so it's like three times bigger um and it definitely feels three times bigger because it's in the middle of london i think in the excel uh center usually in london and that's ridiculous too but also you could go to your local and i was just say if you are local to other areas they do their own comic cons all over the world like they do one in i think belfast or dublin in ireland they do one in manchester they may do one in scotland like just look in your local area if they do any and then just go to that one because they they won't probably be as big as the london one but they'll be probably still pretty big so that's pretty much the experience of a normal person attending these events that's what you can expect that's the stores that they have you know what buying stuff you know accessories and all that that's pretty much it 
So again, I'd recommend you guys to go on the QT, give your own experiences, because again, mine's going to be a little bit warped on that aspect. Uh, so it would be cool if somebody could write what they what they expected and what they got. Or if you have questions, ask them on QT and hopefully people will answer. I'll try and answer a few as well. Um, but then let's just talk about the second half to this. And that's going to be um, talking about uh, what's it like going as a content creator? What's it like going as a guest? Um, so the past... Well, just to kind of say my experience of events, I never went to an event where I wasn't invited to some capacity. And what I mean by that, my first ever event I went to was actually a Comic-Con. So I did go in the deep end straight away, but I went as press. So I, I had a little bit of a different experience to most people straight away. So instead of having that over hour queue to even get into the event, I walked straight up to the door, flashed my piece of paper that said I was press, got in, got my pass and I was in. Like that, I had no queue. So that that obviously straight away was different. And that was a few years ago now. Uh, but now moving more to the, the, the nearer, um, you know, events that I've done, uh, I've always been a, a guest of some sort. So in I-58, Insomnia 58, which is, was actually League Fest, I was a special guest of that event, uh, which means I had like access everywhere that I wanted. I could go up to the private lounge and all that stuff. Didn't have to wait in queue. And also you, you're treated a bit differently. Um, so in that event, and it's actually oops, back here... And I actually can show you this. Um, so this is what I received uh, for that event. And as you can see, a special guest. So this was literally dangling from my chest. So anybody that saw it, you know, they know. And you, you do get treated a bit differently. So at that event, I wasn't like the special guest that had uh, a signing specific time. So when Fi and Fox were busy doing that, because they were, I went around just the normal event. So I went to different booths and I just experienced different things. And that's when I did my filming and stuff. And I remember specifically the game Mafia 3. They had their booth. And obviously this was a while ago. And they were closing it off to people. And they weren't letting people in. But then I walked up and I was like, oh, what's this? And literally they opened it up and let me in. And they just refused other people. And I was just like, huh. And it's because of this. So I say, you do get a bit of a different experience. And I got to, you know, experience Mafia 3 a little bit different than most people. Uh, but that, that was cool. So this this pass will get you places and do things. Again, when you go to these events and you are something like this, they generally give you food vouchers. I actually didn't get one last time I went, but I, I think I was a, a different guest. And I'll explain that in a minute. Um, but if you get one of these, you will get more benefits. Uh, obviously, you always just say you guys will get one of these. Um, so this sometimes is the pass that you'll actually get. And they're wristbands. They do like the wristbands. So that was the weekend pass to Y58. And then the, the event I just went to, this was actually my ticket. Uh, this Twitch Partner Lounge bracelet, this is what I wore to get everywhere. This, this, this was it. I didn't get a ticket. I didn't get anything else. This is it. Uh, technically, I did get a ticket, which was this, but that was actually a mistake, but I kept it anyway. Um, but yeah, as soon as you have something like this or you have your badge, you literally just walk up to them. They, a lot of the time, don't even stop you because as you're walking up to them, they're kind of scanning you to see if they can see one of these or something like that. And they'll just let you in without even stopping you. So that's kind of a big difference between going to the events as a content creator and not is you have a lot more access and you have a lot less hassle with queues and that type of thing, which is nice. Um, but I guess it makes sense because if you're stuck in a queue as a content creator, you might be late for something. So obviously that can't happen. Um, and sometimes they'll let you use some of the entrances that most people can't. I remember, so I went to, so the last event I went to, I was given, like I mentioned, I was given this ticket. Uh, before I was given this pass by mistake and I was meeting Fire and Fox and I went to try and get into a specific entrance and the guy was like oh no you can't come in this entrance go in the other entrance and I was like no okay so I went in the other entrance later in the day I said to the person you gave me this but I needed one of these I got one of these had it on I went to the same entrance with the same guard on duty didn't stop me this time because he saw I had this and that was like the exhibitor entrance or something so it does have its perks. Um, so going to these events as a content creator, honestly, they're some of the best things you can do because a lot of the time when you're doing streaming or YouTube and you do it for months, like you do it with you do it for months and you haven't been to an event for months, it's very easy to kind of forget not what you're doing it for, but forget who you're doing it for. A lot of the time it's like, oh, how many views did that video get? Okay, 20,000. How many likes did it get? Oh, 1,000. Oh, great. You know, they're, they're numbers. 
uh, how many comments did it get oh numbers or that username you know whatever it may be it's very hard to remember they're real people like every single that that twenty thousand that does actually equate to twenty thousand individual people roughly um which is incredible and a lot of the time you forget that after not going to an event for a certain amount of time but then going to these events put it puts it into perspective like amazingly like it, it, it to me anyway it's some of the best stuff i can do and even if i'm only there for a few hours like i was last time it still does the trick because i'm all i'm just looking around going all these people or most of these people are here to meet a content creator they enjoy a lot of the time that's what these events are for and uh, when people come up to me i have a little chat with them and stuff like that and it's awesome and uh, I actually bump into the same people quite often. And I'll say, if you're, I'll just say this, uh, if you're part of the Worcester gr uh, crew, um, somehow get in contact with me. I, probably Twitter's the best way. Um, because I'm, I, I'm sure I'm going to bump into you guys most event. And I you seem like good guys, so I'll try and add you on League and we'll play some games. Because, yeah, it will, it will seem like fun. Um, but that that's what I go to these events for, is to meet people that watch my stuff, potentially even get some feedback, because, I, you know, it's one thing taking feedback in the YouTube comment section. You're purely anonymous. Somebody could just rage out in the comment section. And that's why I don't take it that seriously. But if someone is giving me feedback, right, like face to face, they're looking me in the eye. I respect that completely. And I always will. Uh, you know, someone's like, oh, can you play that champion? Yeah, sure. Like, that's what I want to do. Like one of the guys, like I literally just mentioned, was like, oh, get master. And I'm like, oh, I'm working on it. So even that, it just ignites me more when somebody in person tells me to get master rather than a, just a YouTube comment. Like, I know that sounds weird, and to most of you, like, oh, I'm never going to meet you, so does, does that mean I mean nothing? No, it, it doesn't. Like, you guys do mean stuff to me, trust me. Like, you really do. But these events kind of reignite what you guys mean. Like, you, like I will take, literally, for the next few weeks, few months, I will take the YouTube comment, uh, YouTube comment section more seriously because it this event has reminded me that you guys are real. And I know that sounds weird, but it's a weird world that I live in. You know, I, I do this for a living. So, uh... Yeah, it's pretty cool though. So this event, and I don't want to make this video too long, so we're going to kind of wrap it up. We're going to be talking about two other things uh, for the ex experience of a content creator. We're going to be talking about the, the the Twitch private lounges, and then we're going to be talking about the stage work I just did, and that's going to wrap up today, today's video. So the Twitch private lounges, and again, just to mention, this is what this badge literally says, Twitch private lounge uh partner lounge um so i don't know but i'm pretty sure if even if you have not been invited by twitch to these events if you're a partner of twitch so if you have the subscriber button i'm pretty sure you can email them and say hey i'm going to that event can i get a, a partner uh, badge and even if you're not working with twitch at these events i'm pretty sure you can get one because it's just the partner lounge any twitch partner i think can go in um but these are lounges again. Some of you are like, oh, what are they like? They're nothing crazy. A lot of the time, they're just a lot of sofas uh, or a lot of tables uh, with a buffet type area that just has a lot of drinks in them uh, with TVs that generally have the stage on them. So if, you, if your friend of yours is on stage, you don't have to sit in front of the stage. You can go back to the Twitch lounge and watch them on the TV. And there's a couple of Xboxes just set up if you're basically, say, like you're a FIFA person and you're going to be playing FIFA on stage in 15 minutes. You can have a warm up game backstage or something like that. So it's a good idea. Um, so these, you know, they're generally a chill out area that, you know, you most of the time stay within your own group. But there is sometimes mixing and it's like, oh, hey, how are you doing? And, you know, that type of thing. People do definitely meet in these areas. Um, and just to kind of say two small stories um, from two different insomnias. So I-58, we'll start with that one. So that one was the League, uh, League Fest specific insomnia. They invited a lot more people to that one uh, than they did the, the recent one because that one was for League of Legends. Um, so I'll just say, again, quickly, I went up to the, the, the lounge. That lounge was actually up a, a whole flight of stairs. And you're walking towards the lounge and you're like, oh, there's some of the Yogscast people. There's LD Shadow Lady. And you're kind of just like, well, this is weird. Uh, but again, you kind of respect that that's the, you know, this is kind of their private time i guess their security time that they don't have to be kind of be ld shadow lady or they don't have to be yogs cast so they can kind of just be them but i walk in the lounge and i spot where fires so i walk over and then i sit down and then it kind of hits me i'm sitting next to spazzy gripex is opposite me and there's a couple others that you know that are there and i'm just kind of like what is going on i think gbay might have been there as well and i'm just like huh you know do i belong here and technically i do but it, it still feels weird and again this is where you know i'm Still, you know, content creator get invited to this stuff, but I'm probably more leaning towards you guys at home than probably them because I'm a fan of some of these people. I watch Spazzy myself and he's sitting next to me and I'm just like, 
this is weird. Um, but that that's a, just just a, something that's a, I guess a bonus is that you get to meet people that you may normally not uh, get photos with them and that type of thing. Um, so that was that was I fifty eight. That was the weird thing for me was meeting those type of people. And then recently I sixty, again same type of story after my stage work, which I'll talk about in a minute. Went into the Twitch lounge and boom, there's just the Yogs cast over there. So I go over there, have a, a little chat with them, get photos with them and that type of thing. Because I know a few of the members from the Yogs cast um, already, but I didn't know the ones that were over there. So Duncan, Xylus, Lewis were over there. And that was weird because um, I've watched the Yogs cast for over six years. Again, I know some of them, um, but I've never met the ones I just met. And, you know, if you follow me on Twitter and Snapchat and Snapchat and stuff, I posted only one picture and I posted the one with Duncan. Um, but yeah, that, that was crazy because it's just like, I don't, you know, blah. And then also just to kind of go about the stage work. So before I talk about the stage work itself, another kind of weird meeting thing was I went down the stage after finishing. And then who's there kind of basically waiting is Hat Films. Like I've, I've Hat Films are some of my favorite YouTubers. I've met Smith before. Um... A couple years ago but it's like this is weird and you know they knew kelly and kelly was saying hi to ross and stuff and i was just like what world am i in like what is going on you know late in the day i literally came home and what did i do i watched the hat films video and i was just like god i just i said hi to them earlier like what the hell's going on so again weird um really weird and i'll say if you're a fan of hat films Trot is actually not that small it's just the fact that ross and um smith are so tall trot's actually taller than me so I'm I'm quite short though, but um, yeah, like he's actually not that short. He's like normal size. It's just the fact that Smith is like six foot three and Ross is like six foot one, so they they kind of tower over him. Um, but yeah, that's weird. You know, I, I've technically in this past weekend shared the same stage as a lot of the Yogscast people. I've shared the stage with the Hat Films, with two Angry Gamers. Unfortunately, I didn't get to meet them um, because they came later in the day. I, I went on their Twitch chat later on, uh, well, yesterday, and they were like, yeah, unfortunately we couldn't meet because they were there later in the day. They arrived when I basically left. Um, but then let's just talk about the final thing. This video has definitely gone longer than I wanted it to go, but anyway, uh, is um, stage work. So I was very nervous about this stage work. It's the first time that I ever got invited. You know, I didn't ask for this. I literally got an email from Twitch saying... Would you like to come on stage at Insomnia I-60 and play some League uh, with Fi, Fox, Kelly Jean and Ross Booms, uh, Boom Socks? I got it right this time. Um, and I was like, yep, cool, let's go. Um, and yeah, that, that was surreal. You know, again, the, these aren't just stages and they just get broadcasted online. I'm sure, again, the VOD is somewhere available, I think. Twitch.tv slash multiplay, so the VOD might be somewhere in there. Um, but we, got, we were streaming live. Again, I don't know how many viewers are watching. Um, I think at one stage, me and Ross, because he was sitting next to me, he had his phone. And before the stream started, I think there was 500 people watching, but I, I have no idea when we were actually playing how many people were watching. Um, but then furthermore, in front of us, we have an audience. We have a live audience of people all on benches, seats, and that was packed. I don't know how many people were there, but it was easily hundreds like literally it was uh, so many people but luckily for me uh, you know i guess all of us were a little bit nervous but we had monitors in front of us so i couldn't directly see the audience and i think that helped a little bit but that was weird and i'll say uh, it, they all seemed really nice like the twitch staff behind what we were doing frankie was our main contact and uh, she was she was really nice and i'm looking forward to like work more with twitch and stuff uh, in a professional way like i, I hope it's going to happen and by what the way she was kind of wording things, it's likely we'll be doing more stage work in the future. Um, and, and well, another thing that they were praising us for, unfortunately, again, this is where you guys get to know stuff and what goes through our heads, is we were basically planning, or what the plan was, was to play against people in the audience. So there was 10 computers on stage, and we were like, yeah, hey, we'll just pick people from the audience to play against them. Unfortunately, the plan changed. And we had to do something else with literally five to ten minutes notice. They were like, can you do something else? You know, we, we don't want to do that. And we we're like, oh, OK. As uh, so we ended up just playing normal games and it was fun. You know, we, we had uh, just a, a good laugh and a joke. Uh, Ross randomly was playing Pantheon support in game one and then he went top. Uh, I played Darius in game one and I kind of crushed a Cho'Gath. And obviously, I didn't know what ratings these people were, but luckily, some of my viewers I met after the stream kind of were like, yeah, we looked up the rating. You're against a silver five Cho'Gath, I think it was. I was like, oh, that explains a lot. So did feel sorry for that guy a bit, but I played Darius with the new Dread Nova skin, which is kind of cool. And then we finished on an ARAM. 
but it, it was cool you know going on that stage you know just walking up and being like i'm actually the person that's kind of supposed to be entertaining people here is a bit surreal and i think it's going to take me a few a few tries a few goes to kind of get you know really confident because the weird thing with me talking like people say oh, has you talk too much i talk too much when it's just me uh, so in this video, I'm sure I've, I've spoken a lot. In my commentaries, I speak a lot. But when it comes to me playing ranked fives back in the day or competitive, I used to speak basically hardly at all. And that was what I was actually worried about. I was like, am I actually going to say enough? And I, I think I said, you know, a decent amount, but I probably could have said more. And um, no, that, that was just fun. And just, you know, just to be invited by Twitch. And that, that was the main reason I went. You know, the two main reasons was to meet people and to kind of do work with twitch because it's it's a cool thing to be invited by a company that is like as big as twitch so hopefully more events will come soon again i will also always tell people when events are coming and i'll say my next event unfortunately i think calendar is not happening um there's just a couple things that we didn't really realize you know, how long the flights were and that type of thing so unfortunately i don't think canada is happening which i'm disappointed about um but you know there's nothing really i can do um unfortunately because uh, i don't really w I, I was gonna go with fi and i'm, I'm not gonna go to you know all the way to canada by myself uh, without you know a fellow content creator and stuff um so unfortunately that's not happening but i am gonna go to coxcon in um july uh, that's in telford it's not my event i have been given a free pass and stuff as a mini guest uh, but i'm i'm not going there as a guest pretty much at all i'm going there and i'll be just in the regular audience in the regular queues meeting people i'm not having any special privileges as i'm aware in that event at all um i'm just there to meet the people that i personally look up to so there's that and then finally i won't say a lot but i, I do know there is another insomnia happening later in the year and there may be more league stuff involved with that one. And I'll probably be going to that one too. So if you want to meet me, those are the kind of two events like, you know, CoxCon and then the next Insomnia. Those are the two most likely places. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So what I'd say is I'll leave it to you guys. If you want to leave comments in the uh, comment section below, feel free to do that. Or go in the QT, leave feedback there. If you've got an event that you think I'd like, again, let me know. I'm always looking to go to, to more new events. Um, but that's going to be it. So if you did like this kind of long explanation of gaming events, uh, apologies, I really didn't mean it to go this long, but it just happens. Throw a like on the video, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you guys next time. See ya.